Daisy Khan is the executive director and founder of the American Society for Muslim Advancement and works to help Muslim women overcome many of the challenges that they face. Thank you very much for joining us on Thank World you Focus. For having me. Let's talk a little bit about what are some of the other big social taboos that uh, women face in Muslim countries and how does it affect their lives? Well, there is no one major overarching issue or a taboo that cuts across the entire Muslim world. However, there are some major concerns that we have. Number one, how do we apply even-handed justice from, to Muslim women? And the issue that you've just mentioned, for instance, I can state a couple of things. Rape is still considered to be a major taboo. If you're raped, not only are you a victim, you're a double victim because people, you know, you cannot, you have to remain in silence. Uh, because you're dishonored, not only yourself, your family, and your entire tribe or your community. And the way that's discussed in Muslim society is, ex is exactly the same. Is it, is it brushed under the carpet? Is it you, you don't talk about it because you disgrace your family? Or are there some societies in which the conversation is beginning to happen and we're hearing um, more and more about women trying to challenge these things? Well, the good news is that there are many Muslim women who are extremely articulate and intelligent and highly educated, and they are taking a stand and just recently you heard in Sudan a woman who was wearing trousers and instead of instead of just you know going under she invited all her friends to come to her trial so this is an example of how women are leading the change in their societies and we don't want these kinds of uh, abuses against women. We want to see women in a dignified uh, role, which is what Islam calls for. We believe gender equality is an intrinsic part of Islam. Are these taboos, though, really re rooted in religion, or is re religion being used to control women's lives? I mean, it comes down to this uh, a debate that you hear over and over again. It's a question of interpretation. What, what are your thoughts on that? It is, it is a question of distorted interpretation, but it's also a question of culture trumping religion. So much so that the custom of that particular society, a tribal custom, is upheld more than religious or Islamic law per se. So in a society like Afghanistan, the way that women are treated there is going to be very different to how the culture is in Morocco and exactly. how these issues are discussed and debated exactly. and how women are treated. Because the culture be, ha, informs how people think of their religion. And in tribal societies, women are silenced, women are kept separated. And in Afghanistan, you know, women are largely silent. But there are many women in Afghanistan that have stepped in the front and are taking a leadership role. And these are the things that I'm hopeful about. What about legislation? Is there um, some legislation that you've seen which you're very hopeful for, say, for example, on the issues of honor killings, which are uh, a problem in countries across South, Muslim countries in South Asia and also non-Muslim countries as well? Like, um, what's being done to tackle those sorts of issues? With these issues, you need some major stakeholders. Number one, if the government is on your side, it's very critical. For instance, in Pakistan right now, there is legislation being passed against domestic violence. And this is very critical. But I also know that women's groups are now galvanizing together to create social change. Even though you pass legislation, you need groups on the ground. You need cultural champions. You need women's groups. You need uh, religious champions to basically create a social change in society. All right, Daisy Khan, thank you very much for joining us on uh, World Focus. Thank you very much for having me.